the past ones also. What are, we've been doing this for four years? 2016. 2016, yeah, it goes back. So if you, we miss something now, then we'll, you can get it from the past. I always say to myself, I really don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> you know, there, there's so much. Um, but, all right, so let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for another opportunity to talk about your system of education. Uh, we're thankful that you have enlightened us uh, at this time in Earth's history when it's uh, most needed, and all of us need to understand the science of true education. So may our ears be attentive, may our hearts be softened, uh, may uh, our eyes be open to see your plan for education. And I thank you for your presence here and your Holy Spirit uh, to keep us on track and keep us focused on uh, what is most important for uh, this moment. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, um, let's, oh yes, let's start uh, and touch on, let's see, we, we, taught, we touched on a little bit on the family Bible lessons for uh, the curriculum. Uh, you can look on page 10 of the uh, seminar notebook, page 10. It's an outline of the school program from Sunlight Education Ministry. And uh, birth through age seven, it's the age, it says that um, this is grade for babies, kindergarten, and preschool, using the family Bible lessons. And uh, it's age eight, first grade, what you do is you add a language program. Uh, this one is recommended, the writing and spelling road to reading and thinking. Ages nine through 14 or 15, second through eighth grade, uh, uses the Desire of All Nations program, and that's where academics are introduced and uh, the children would have uh, a health book, a math book, a music book, science book, nature book, history, geography, and prophecy, language, and voice. And they're all set up uh, to use the Bible as the main textbook. And then as you learn the different laws and principles of those academic subjects, you also learn uh, the spiritual lessons coming from the desire of ages. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, then ages 15 or 16 through 19, ninth through 12th grade or high school, uh, it has some study guides there that Sunlight has um, put together. And then also in the roadmap and route, uh, books that have not been written yet, but there are, it's an outline so that by that age, they can be doing their own research. And ages 20 to 25, college, um, it's suggesting here apprenticeship. All right, and what the Spirit of Prophecy says about that. Uh, on page 14, well, before that, page 13, there's a little box that says we recommend the following, and it gives the ages for, say, kindergarten, preschool, first grade, uh, grades 2 through 8 and the ages, grades 9 through 12 and the ages, and apprenticeship. Uh, when I got the sunlight material, my daughter was about 8, um, and uh, we just, after going through the training program from sunlight, which uh, corresponds or correlates to the book education, um, <clears throat> I found that the the best thing for me to do is just to put aside what the worldly system says you have to, your child has to learn at certain ages, and just go by what God says, what he requires. And that really freed me up as a parent, teacher, and uh, it was very helpful. So I didn't really do grades. Uh, I did, um, mainly I shared the information. I taught that to my child, uh, my daughter especially, and. Uh, what she could comprehend at the age that she was, and then we practiced it, we p applied it to our life, uh, and then she just uh, expanded as she could. 
and as she was capable. And she was a late reader also, didn't read until about 12. Um, she was reading some, you know, the sight reading. She uh, really didn't like phonics. She just could not get that. So I, I mainly read to her. And, um, and she picked up reading pretty much on her own and writing. And um, oh, it was very interesting that she, um, and maybe, are you going to get into some of what you did also? She, did you bring it? Oh. She put together, uh, well, first of all, she put, uh, uh, what was it? We were learning uh, health principles and learning a new way of eating. And so she put together a recipe book um, of this, these new recipes that we were developing because I had many food allergies and so we'd get a recipe and I couldn't use a lot of the things that were in there and so um, she put together her own book and then she I think we made 10 copies that was the beginning of her publishing work which was she was only about 14 at that time so um, between 12 and 14 she really uh, advanced as far as her reading ability and writing and um, after she made 10 copies of that recipe book and gave it to relatives, then she made uh, maybe 10 more copies, and then it was 50 copies, and, and each time she would edit you know, her work, and then finally she just said, no, I'm not gonna do any more because the recipes are not perfect. <laughs> They're not perfect. So she's a perfectionist, and isn't that the grade we're looking for? Perfection? Yes. Uh, and so she never got a grade. Her grade was always you know, aim for perfection. And um, in publishing, of course, uh, there's a lot of editing that, that takes place. And isn't that in life? There's, gotta, there's a lot of reproof and correction and, oh, got to do it better. Uh, it's, it's always advancing and, and growing. And so that was a beautiful experience. And she got a, comp well, I'm kind of telling her story. But time is going to run out, and I'll miss some things, so I'm, I'm putting it in here. Um, she got a computer at about 14. Oh, well, she had to use that, see, for publishing. She never put a game on that computer, never a game. Whereas her brother got a computer at age 8, he's older, and uh, that's all he wanted on his computer. And it crashed on him, and um, yeah, he, he's had that... Uh, as a stumbling block in his life, um, games and movies and things like that. It can ruin, it can ruin us, um, whatever addiction it is, whatever um, stumbling block it is. But praise the Lord um, for what God has done and what he still can do in our lives, even though we may have uh, ruined most of our life. Um, God can take us where we are and he can remake us. That's what he wants to do. He wants to reproduce his character in us. All right, so uh, back to um, the, the learning experience uh, through the family Bible lessons um, and page 14. We've talked a little bit about um, the family Bible lessons. And on page 15, you'll see uh, how it goes through the Bible in a systematic way. Uh, Mrs. Cook, Jeannie Cook, who put this uh, curriculum together, she uh, was a conference worker, and she wanted um, she she read in the spirit of prophecy that we should have written our own books, our own books instead of using Baptist books and you know. Amish books and all these other uh, books, we should have written our own. And that's what the sunlight material is about. It's, it's about learning the pattern of study. Bible first, everything we study. What does the Bible say about it? What does the spirit of prophecy say about it? How do you see those laws and principles in nature? And then character is a main focus. That's more important than the grade. And then if your character is right, guess what's going to happen with the grade? It's going to go up, isn't it? Yes, like Daniel. Ten times wiser and stronger. Uh, Daniel chapter 1. He purposed in his heart that he wouldn't defile his body. 
And so um, that's so important. So Jeannie Cook, the director, she is, she's deceased last year. She um, died. Uh, so she won't be um, writing any more books. Uh, but she, her purpose was to teach people how to study the Bible, how to study the Bible. And so that's what, from birth on, the Bible is the main textbook. And it's a systematic way of using the Bible. And, and learning from it, truly learning uh, what does it have to say. And so many people are coming to churches and sitting on pews for years and don't know how to study the Bible. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing to be teaching, you know, from birth on. This The Bible, it's a beautiful stories, and not just stories, but they teach us how to live, how to make right choices. And then uh, second grade to eighth grade, uh, the main Bible theme is the desire of nations or desire of uh, ages. And uh, so learning uh, as a, a young child about the early life of Jesus. And uh, it's, it's so beautiful, uh, the concept, what God wanted and what he intended for us as Seventh-day Adventists to learn from the Bible. But we got caught up in... Um, uh, licensing and accrediting and uh, doing what the world said we, we need to do. And um, so we've gotten away from it. But we can get back to it. And um, on page 20, there's a suggested daily schedule. How many of you are having an easy time because it's a habit with you to get up early? And your children? Yeah, uh, yeah. well, when it's a habit, like here for suggested uh, daily schedule, 6 a.m., personal grooming and worship. And uh, so teaching the children to get up early and help with breakfast, making breakfast. And uh, I used to get up even before, before the children. Of course, they'd do my study, and then I'd go for my walk and get in an hour walk before even before breakfast. And it, it sets the metabolism for the whole day, and you have energy. You, parents lacking energy? <laughs> uh, go for that daily walk and, and get that amazing breakfast for a king uh, first thing in the morning. And uh, I used to, with my children, I used to take them out in our... Unfortunately, we lived in a residential area when the children were young, but we turned the whole backyard into a garden. It was in Arizona, the desert, uh, hard as cement, rock uh, ground. So we brought in the sand and the soil and the topsoil and the mulch and uh, built up beds. And we had a, a lush garden um, back there. I think Kimberly, one of the first things she did was plant 80 kale plants. Did you like kale? We ate a lot of greens then. <clears throat> we learned to eat greens. And uh, it, it was beautiful. Well, it was a different experience. <laughs> a wonderful experience. Un I say unfortunately. Uh, my family didn't grasp it. You know, if, if you think it's hard, if these, you didn't grow up, you know, on the farm and gardening and everything, it's beautiful to to see a family show us, you know, I want to say, an ideal situation, but, you know, they, they had hardship. But they were all together uh, going forward. Sometimes in families you have one who believes that and another who doesn't. And uh, in that way it's, it's somewhat difficult. Uh, but we still go forward, don't we, as much as we can. And... Um, and I, I, by faith, went out in my backyard with a shovel, you know, and pff, no, it's not going down. And then I had, there were people, many people that came and helped us um, put that garden in. And uh, it was a, a beautiful experience, even though there was hardship and trial. It makes it more meaningful, too. All right, so a daily schedule, um, it's important. A schedule is like bones. What would it be like if you didn't have bones? You know what a flat fish looks like? <laughs> or jellyfish? Or, yeah, I think of the flat fish down there. Uh, God has given us bones, the skeletal system. Uh, in the second grade to eighth grade program, lesson 10, there's a whole book. Let's see, I'll show it to you. On bones. And uh, lesson 10. Second grade to eighth grade, and the ten represents chapter ten in Desire of Ages. 
So you, the whole time you're in the academic subjects with uh, the number 10 on it, you're going over and over and over that chapter in Desire of Ages. And some people say, that, well, I've read it once. Is that enough? <laughs> no. You read it over and over. And maybe it's just a paragraph. And then you've got to go to work, and you work, and God teaches you something about that paragraph that you just didn't know before. So you're opening up your heart and your mind to God speaking to you and uh, you communing with him and he's telling you what's best for you, what's best for your family, what's best for the people you're praying for and he uses you as his vessel. So the bones represent laws and principles. Did Jesus have any bones broken? No bones broken. Did he break any laws? No, they kind of they go hand in hand and so what keeps you upright your bones, of course, your muscles in there. And then there's a, another book. Let's see if I brought it. I oh, no. No, I left it over in the other room, I guess. Um, on muscles. Let's see. No. Um, yeah, whole another book on muscles. I think it's lesson 12, so it corresponds with chapter 12 of Desire of Ages. And um, muscles represent judgment judgment and so when you look at the schedule that if you don't have a schedule if you and I didn't used to when my children were young I didn't have a schedule oh uh, so sad but <clears throat> what I've learned and now maybe I can help encourage you to do if you don't have something like that a schedule is important we don't always go exactly by it but it's got to be a goal um, and you need to have priorities when you're going to get up, when you're going to go to sleep, what time you're going to eat, um, assume, uh, what time you're going to exercise, uh, when you're going to work. Do you have a schedule at work? Yeah. And at home, in the home school, you need a schedule. Your little baby needs a schedule, is that right? Everything works so much better with a schedule. And one of the things I've learned here at UT Pines as well, I was in charge of um, a number of schedules for people. And it's so beautiful to have people on a schedule and then you know you can depend on them and they, they do the work and it gets done. But without the schedule, you're just like, oh no, who's gonna do that? And you just, you're a mess. <laughs> it's confusion. So schedule, bones, they go together. And what is made in the bones? Blood. It's the blood of Jesus. That's what gives us the strength to do and the power to do what he asks us to do. And the blood, if the blood is inflamed because we're on a bad diet or a bad schedule, I had to learn that I had to be on time with my meals. I'd be on time. If you're late, you're early, your enzymes, they're not ready to digest the food. Uh, so many wonderful principles of life and health. And uh, we want to teach our children these things. If we don't know them, we must learn them to teach the children. Because if, if they don't know, if we don't know, it's going to be confusion again. So God is wanting to bring us into his perfect order. So schedule, very important uh, to have certain things on your list. And ask the Lord. Sometimes he puts things out of the schedule and puts something else in. And you go with it because God's the one who is in charge of your day. But um, you don't want to go without a schedule. All right, the, then on page 23, the first grade program, you have the family Bible lessons. And then at age 8, remember the Spirit of Prophecy says, keep your child home between birth and 8 to 10. Now, there's a number of things that are happening in that child's body, brain, eyes, and everything. Uh, that pertain to the reasons why God says to do that. And so language is an academic left hemisphere um, function. And <clears throat> so you can start with phonics at that age, but some children aren't ready at eight. And so you have to uh, understand that and not push. You don't want to make them hate it. So I like to, you know, just bring it in naturally. And that's why I have uh, letters, big letters. Um, and so they can learn what an R looks like. 
They could even trace it. But that's not the main focus uh, in those earlier years. We want to know, uh, first of all, we want to know, um, what's our character quality? Regularity. regularity, regularity, and righteousness, and you know, all these other R words. And they'll learn them, they'll pick them up, because they're little copiers. They're little copiers, and uh, you want to be sure that you are representing the master, because when you put that master on a copy machine and you push a thousand, guess what you're going to get? A thousand copies of the master, right? I stood over a copy machine for seven and a half years, sometimes eight hours a day. I said, God, why do I have to do this? <laughs> and he said, I want you to learn that you've got to represent the master. I was afraid to push a thousand. If there was an error on that master, I'd get a thousand errors. Kim manages the um, print shop here at Uchi Pines. She's not so afraid, but she's made some, there's been some mistakes, huh? Not, not because you want to, or, but it sometimes happens. And uh, it costs money. And when you have a small ministry, just like uh, the farming, it can take you down, it can take you under. And so we, we don't want to make mistakes. We want to be as careful as possible, but there are times when we do that. And so as parents, as teachers, we must represent the master and character if we want our children to also copy us, copy the master. And so, but when we fail, when there are mistakes, and there are, <clears throat> we fail big time, what do we do? We have this sanctuary experience there. We, we take that lamb and we ask for forgiveness. And um, praise the Lord, we don't have to cut the, the throat of that little lamb. But what an illustration. And they did it for 4,000 years before Jesus came. They did that and they didn't learn. Oh, we want to pray and ask the Lord to help us to learn so that um, he will help us. He will help us not sin, not break these laws and principles. So in our education, that's what we are concentrating on is law and principle. Is it love to obey law? Yeah. If you love me, what? You keep my commandments. If you have a child that says, Mom, I love you. See ya. <laughs> Does he love you? Uh, my son, he said, Mom, when I was little, I didn't like you to tell me what to do. Oh. My son didn't learn to carry the cross. I didn't teach it to him. Because when he was a baby, every little, uh, I was there. Every little, I didn't want him to cry. I'd heard so many children cry, I didn't understand. If you want to study about crying, it's okay. Let them cry, right? Don't give them everything. By four years old, my son had had a birthday party every year. First birthday party, first year, he had 60 people come. Filled his room with toys. He will never forget that experience. At four years old, he, I told him he could not have another piece of pie, and he just went out of control. I took him into the bedroom, and I started to spank him. And then I got to thinking, the Lord impressed me, no, Teresa. It's not him as much as it is you. And it was that day that I emptied his room. I took my station wagon, backed it up to his window, and took about two or three loads of toys to the Goodwill. Should have took him to the trash, but took him to the Goodwill. <clears throat> well, he will never forget that. Four years old, what Mama did. It's, it's, that's not the way to do it. <laughs> if we can do it when they're little and they cry and we let them cry. Of course, you, you take care, you gab them on a schedule, you know if they're wet, you know if they're hungry, you know if they have a tummy ache, those kinds of things, but um, <clears throat> you don't, well, with my second, <laughs> my second, I moved her out of the room right off as an infant. She had to be in another room, so I did, I did not hear those little cries. She, I let her cry, except, you know, we, there's still learning that goes on, <laughs> even still. I was the soft mother because of my mother being the hard mother, and uh, not because, but that's just the way I took it. And, um, but I've become a little harder. 
a little harder, but a little firmer. God recently gave me a five-year-old recently last year or so for about, um, th was it three months? S six, huh? six months? Six months, a five-year-old that was totally out of control, that all he wanted to do was play. And uh, I, I, oh, I was a little nervous about it. <clears throat> um, but uh, that little boy, after um, being with me, uh, he didn't think that I would have any toys at all. But then he saw my supply room, and he goes, oh, you have toys. I said, but these are educational toys. And uh, <clears throat> I had to teach him uh, that I was more important than his toys. And so, so I had to do some subtraction. Five years old, he learned mathematics. You do this, this gets taken away. You do this, and you can have it back if you can manage it. And um, so we grow. Wherever you are as a parent or a single person, wherever you are, God wants to grow you. He wants you to overcome your weaknesses and strengthen your strengths so that the talents that he has given you, you can develop and you can use for others to glorify, glorify him. All right. Um, so the language program, eight years old, you can begin that. Uh, Sunlight has uh, some counselors that can help you with that. Um, I, like I said, I did not use a phonics program, so I couldn't help you in, in that area. I can kind of point you in, in the direction. But um, anyhow, page 30, uh, we have another uh, suggested daily schedule. Um, this one, um, yeah, page 30. You see agriculture in there. Domestic chores are part of uh, the practical arts. Um, and yeah, more practical arts. So a lot of um, working, working like we've heard from uh, Sister Pam and, um, and Brother John about industry and, and just work, the fathers working with the boys especially, uh, and the mothers working with the girls. Of course, you, you work with both, um, but they need, uh, the boys need that father role model. The, the girls need the the uh, mother role model. And then, of course, the balancing of the two uh, is so important. God knew what he was doing to make a male and female and uh, then put us together um, as a family. Let's look on page 31. And uh, we can see now this, this is going, uh, I don't want to go into the 238 program just yet. Um, years ago, uh, Sunlight would not allow you to do the second grade to eighth grade program without going through the parent training program. And so that would be similar to reading the book Education, uh, which I hadn't done yet. And so when I got this information, uh, that's what I did. Um, this is the, the training program, uh, Sunlight. I just wanted to show you so like a three inch binder. So it's a, it looks kind of overwhelming. I don't know how many pages, 300 or so. But um, it's not if you just take one chapter at a time <laughs> and, uh, and prayerfully ask God to help you go through it. Uh, in, your, in your book here, um, it does have, let's see if I can find it. In the beginning. In the beginning. Yes, I want to tell you what, okay, page seven. Page seven gives you the... Uh, table of contents. Uh, it's very important for understanding true education. Like I said, you can read the book Education. Uh, you can take this course. It's very, very helpful. Um, <clears throat> the first chapter is character building. So true education is all about character building. And built into the sunlight material, especially the first nine years, every week a new character quality of God. And it's, it's very beautiful for all of us to look, always looking deeper at what do these character qualities of God mean? What does it mean to be obedient? What does it mean to be, uh, have generosity or sensitivity? Um, there's a book here that I have. Will? You know, you get, sometimes you get so many that you get lost. 
and I don't, I don't see it here. It's called The Power of True Success. The Baptist put it out, but um, it's got 49 character qualities in it, and it's very beautiful. It's for adults. Then for uh, the elementary age, uh, what is the Basic Life Institute? Basic Life Institute has character booklets also for elementary with crafts and things. Um, there's a nature lesson, a history lesson, and the definition of that character quality. So, uh, but we have the Bible and we have Spirit of Prophecy, so those are the first resources for looking at these character qualities. And um, in the Bible lesson for the young children, uh, it, they take, it, they, it takes you through the Bible in three years. You have a question? Yes. Is that the curriculum binder there? This is the training, training program for parent teacher. Parent teacher. There, for the second grade to eighth grade program, there is a an outline. So, and you basically, when I take you through one of those books, there's a research section, remind, reinforce, and then review. So you basically go through that section per day. That takes you maybe 50 minutes, you know? Okay. Um, and in the, for the younger children, there is day one, do this. Read uh, the Bible lesson. It tells you where in the Bible, where in the spirit of prophecy to read it. And then right there in the book, there is information. And then there's three questions. So you can share the information and then ask questions. Make sure they comprehend it. And then there's a nature lesson for day one. And so it's a little bit of information about the nature lesson and parallels back to the Bible lesson, tied together, and the character quality. And uh, then it'll say day two. So it's, it's pretty much outlined for you, made easy. So what is true education? Character building, character building, character building. Uh, that's what God wants to reproduce in us. That's the first chapter of the training program. The Bible, the educator. So the Bible is your main textbook from birth on. It's not just a Bible class, but it's Bible in health, Bible in math, Bible in music. And it, the way these books are set up is that it ties the same Bible theme with each academic subject you're listen, uh, reading, studying. And so you learn to do that. You can take any Bible theme and, and take any physical subject that you're studying and see the same laws and principles. So in nature, the more you know about nature and the laws and principles there, and you can tie it together, all the same laws and principles in the spiritual kingdom. Can you, see, can you see what the enemy did by separating it? It's, it's just, to me now, I was never really interested in nature that much. I wasn't interested in being an ornithologist, you know, and knowing all the names of the birds and when to look for them, and then you have to be so quiet to find them, and then you're t keeping track of them and all the... But now I'm interested, because why? Because each one has a message from God. Laws and principles, how God takes care of them, how, um, just like with plants, each plant needs different kind of soil, then they, there's laws and principles for each plant, and it, all through nature, that's the way it is. And so God wants us to have this broad education and know a little about each, but some things he, he really expands so that we know a lot about it. Okay, but the Bible, the main educator, who's the master teacher? Chapter 3, Jesus is the master teacher. It's so beautiful. You're an under teacher, <laughs> under shepherd. And so you have that in chapter 5, the under teacher. Chapter 4 is illustrations of the master teacher. And in the master teacher chapter, it's the methods that Jesus used in teaching. 
Did, he, did Jesus use any drama? Did, was he more theatrical? No, he wasn't. He told parables. He told stories. He was animated, but he, he, he didn't dramatize it. So we have to be careful. But in chapter 7, we'll, we'll learn more about uh, drama there. The, chapter 5 is a major one. We had Kimberly in her uh, presentation on, uh, what is it? Something unpolished. Grown up and polished. Grown up and polished. Yes, she described the uh, developing brain. And uh, so in chapter 5, you have that pretty much uh, transcripted right there. So you got the information. She, she shared uh, uh, quite a bit more. But um, it tells you why between birth and 8 to 10, you don't really teach them to read and academics and all that because of the the right hemisphere fully functioning and all the functions of the right hemisphere. And then that right hemisphere diminishes down to 10%. So it's much harder to learn spiritual things and remember them. So these early years are the spiritual and the creative side. That's why out in nature, free as lambs. And um, <coughs> I'm going to have to drink some water. <coughs> Okay, so chapter five, the developing brain. You're going to want to learn that. Let me get my water here. Uh, chapter six, physical culture. <coughs> what should children be doing? Sitting, sitting around a lot, you know, in those younger years? Should they be sitting around? No, little children, you can't keep them seated, can you? <coughs> they want to move around. And so physical culture, a whole chapter on it. Chapter 7, there's many studies there. There's a study on dress, study on books, what to read. What are the principles for choosing what to read? Uh, drama is one. Toys. What does God say about toys? I'll see what else. Um, I <coughs> Dress, drama, toys, books, and music. Music principles. Uh, so those are, um, it's a really important chapter. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we're going through what's in this training program. You want to go through it. <coughs> okay, chapter 8, discipline and obedience. How, what does discipline mean? What does obedience mean? And uh, it's a whole chapter on discipline. And, of course, um, in other Spirit of Prophecy books, not other, but uh, Spirit of Prophecy books, there's chapters on it, Child Guidance, Adventist Home, um, where we can learn even more. And chapter 9, Academics from the Bible. How do you teach health from the Bible? How do you teach music and history and geography and all this? So chapter 9 goes through each of the academics, and gives suggestions on how to teach it from the Bible. And of course, you have the uh, Sunlight Lesson books that uh, are a pattern for you to do that. But also, on the Sunlight website, uh, there are audios that uh, Mrs. Cook uh, actually goes through uh, how to teach, gives you more suggestions on how to teach these subjects from the Bible. And chapter 10 is the higher course uh, education doesn't stop here, and we don't really graduate uh, here, but we graduate as we go to heaven to the higher course. So, um, do, you, do you burn out from education down here? Is it easy to burn out? Yeah, where you don't want to open another book or cram, you know, 200 pages in, in, in a night. <clears throat> but there isn't going to be a burnout uh, of education. I didn't want that for my child. I wanted her to love learning. I wanted her to 
love being a, a student too. You know, it's not. It's humbling to not know and uh, but be willing to to learn. And uh, so children, it's so wonderful to see their eagerness to learn. And I wanted to keep that um, a love for learning. All right, page eight, um, some books uh, that are recommended. Um, and Sister Pam. Uh, mentioned Living Fountains or Broken Cisterns, Studies in Christian Education, and here we have The Place of the Bible in Education by A.T. Jones. That's one. And one there, I can't, uh, what is it? The Exercise and Work Brochure. Okay, I'm not familiar with that one, actually. And the book Education. Oh, thank you so much. <clears throat> um, and other suggestions for parent training. Uh, Kellogg's book, <clears throat> uh, Studies in Character Building, uh, Mrs. Kellogg, and Gentle Measures by Jacob Abbott. Uh, Happy Hours at Home is uh, similar to Pilgrim's Progress. It's an allegory, I believe. And Daniel and His Education, oh, by Stephen Haskell. Chapter. Yes, that's excellent. All right. <clears throat> well, um, let's go on to the second grade to eighth grade program. Um, let's go back to page 31. Page 31. What does that remind you of, that picture? The way that it's set up there. What is, uh, did I hear sanctuary? Yes. Yes with um, the, the tribes on each side. Um, <clears throat> the, the center focus of true education is the Bible. So that's what you want to keep at the center of um, your training program. True education is to know God. This is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ our Lord. So the Bible is your main center focus. And then your academics, when a child is um, ready for second grade to eighth grade, which is uh, about the age of nine and uh, onward, then you have the seven uh, academic books. And um, okay, um, <clears throat> you have health is the first one. Uh, so. This is uh, lesson one. It's called What is Health? It's your uh, health book. The next one is uh, The Body, um, and this is a health book. And the border is red. So the colors of the academic subjects are color coded with the rainbow. And there's um, a, f a book, let's see, here it is, <clears throat> that uh, for the first day of school, for second grade to eighth grade would be the Covenant Rainbow Covenant book, and uh, it tells you what a covenant is in here, uh, <clears throat> what the rainbow represents, and what the, all the different colors represent spiritually. So you see a red strawberry. How many how many strawberry plants did you plant? Did you say eighteen hundred? Eight thousand? Eighteen thousand. See that's. Whoa, 18,000 plants. Kim planted 80 kale plants. That was a lot, but 18,000. That's, that's amazing. <clears throat> so the red strawberry, um, I'm sure they, once those little red strawberries came on, they were just, you were elated. <laughs> it was a miracle to see those little uh, plants and the, that fruit. Well, red represents sacrifice. Sacrifice. So every time you see, like here, they have red cardinals that'll just kind of fly by. Those male red cardinals, and so it can be bring a thought of the sacrifice that Jesus, He died for us. See the thoughts. The thoughts make up our character. So God wants us to everything we see, hear, taste, touch, to remind us of Him. So as they're learning about his sacrifice in the area of health, 
we have this uh, lesson book color coded red. And then the next color, and I found these, uh, what do you call these little box things um, at Target or Walmart right around this time when school starts in September. We are already in October. Um, <clears throat> So you can file your books there, and it's a fast way of, of seeing something and being reminded of it. So I have red, and then I'll put all the health books uh, in the red little tray there. It keeps it orderly and so forth. So um, then you have yellow. Well, this extra says orange, so I have them out of order. Orange means judgment. You know, when you go to a prison, how, what do they dress the prisoners in? What are the uniforms color? Orange, yeah, judgment. Okay, we're in the judgment time. I think um, someone today came with the orange little bow and the hair, you know, so what did I think about judgment? Uh, <clears throat> so once again, just uh, getting our thoughts onto something spiritual. Yellow, divinity, gold, divinity, faith and love, see? Uh, green, faith. It's alive. When, when you have faith, you are alive. You're not dead. You're not walking around. You know you are alive like the trees. Okay. <clears throat> um, blue, obedience, loyalty, the sky. You know, look up in the sky and just look at how beautiful. This is where God walks, you know. Uh, his law is illustrated by the blue sky. And <clears throat> indigo, royalty, uh, priesthood. Violet, obedience unto death. And so your covenant book, what the children do with this is um, they will cut out pictures of things in nature that uh, have these colors, and then they can make, start making a book uh, of the different colors that God has used, and then the messages, spiritual messages that God has used as well. So <clears throat> learning what a covenant is. All right. Um, so health book, uh, one of uh, my favorite books uh, is The Body uh, for the Desire of All Nations, Chapter 2. And uh, <clears throat> the body, some of the spiritual lessons uh, are, are just so beautiful. There's actually a, a Bible mark in here. <clears throat> God's temple, your body is God's temple, and then all the scriptures that refer to the body as the temple of God, and then the children can mark their Bibles that way. So <clears throat> there's always a, there's a Bible mark, there's stories, um, reinforce, um, research section. <clears throat> um, when you look at these tribe uh, banners all around the room, this is uh, illustrating the body of Christ, and, uh, and we're part of it, and which tribe do you belong to? So see, you can take from what you study and what you know and apply it to today in what we're learning. And so it's always building on uh, what you have learned in the past. So this is a very special uh, health book, The Body. Uh, I won't put it back here. Um, there's over 70 books for the second grade to eighth grade. And uh, it used to be that uh, that cost, basically for printing that many years ago, was about close to $600 for 70 books. And I figure, well, that's pretty good for a second grade to eighth grade. And uh, when you consider education and the cost of education today, well, I didn't have that much money years ago, <clears throat> and so I put it on my prayer list. And uh, I have an, well, I had an aunt, she's deceased now, but she asked, uh, what would you like for the children for Christmas? And uh, she knew that I wasn't just accepting any kind of gift, because um, I really wanted um, health and education uh, gifts, and so she gave me a check. She gave me a check that covered the cost of the 238 program for my children. And at that time, uh, they would send all those books. I think we had to put them into notebooks. But that's a lot of books, 70 books. Well, it ended up uh, years later that I was actually printing those books and mailing them for people and putting them together. 
what an experience that was. But now you get that experience. You get to uh, put together your own books, and it's even more meaningful when you do the work. Uh, <clears throat> but um, something that goes along with these academic uh, books is uh, a Bible study booklet. Uh, which tells you what tools are needed for Bible study. So a nine-year-old, uh, they've learned to read fairly well by that time. They get to start using, uh, what kind of books do you need to study the Bible? What kind of tools? A concordance. Yes. Oh, my. Okay, these are the, the Bible study tools. <clears throat> Now, this is hard copy. Do children need hard copy? Yes. yes. Children need hard copy. Of course, you know, the computer is, is nice and easy. Um, so you don't have to carry these things around. But, okay, so we have a Strong's Concordance here. Big book. And uh, this is something that they begin to learn with this second grade to eighth grade program, how to use the concordance. Okay, what else do you need? What do you think this book is? This is an 1828 Noah Webster dictionary. Big, huh? Actually, I believe the um, E.G. White, what, what do you call it? App, yeah, uses this, 1828. Why would you need an 1828 dictionary versus a modern dictionary? Well, when was the Spirit of Prophecy written? In the 1800s. So it's going to help you understand words better, like a word. Um, there's a coloring book that you start with, with the second grade to eighth grade program as well, called the Casket. Would you like your children to you have a coloring book called a Casket? <laughs> so what is a Casket? What is a casket? In the 1828 dictionary, it says that a casket is, you know what it is? A jewel box where you put gems. Yeah. And so this coloring book is about William Miller's dream. And it was about a casket. And he, there was a man, he walked into a room, and in that room, on a table, was a jewel box with jewels in it, all neat and orderly and everything. And then uh, people started coming in the room. <laughs> and they pick, pick up the, the jewels, and then what they do with them? They just drop them here and drop them there. Pretty soon, jewels are all over the room. Is that what has been done with God's word? These precious gems that are there? to pick them up, maybe throw them back down, don't do anything with it. Well, <clears throat> then comes along the man with the dirt brush, and he sweeps up the room, and he puts the jewels back in, in a more perfect order. The man with the dirt brush. So they get to read about that and color the pictures, and they're learning. Many children today have not had the Bible as their main textbook from birth to nine years old, starting the second grade. And sometimes they come at 15, 16, and they haven't had the Bible as their main textbook. And so this program at second grade, nine years old, they get to learn that the Bible, they get this, the Bible is called a casket. Did you know that? Yeah, the Bible is full of gems. Is, ge is a gem, you know, these rocks out here on the pavement, the granite and everything? Is that a gem? No. What's a gem? A rare and precious. That's right. Precious gems are in God's words. It's called a casket. And guess what else is called a casket? Where do you put the gems from God's word? In your heart, well, that's called a casket, too. So your brain is called a casket. And <clears throat> so a casket is what? A jewel box. And yes, when you put your loved one there, 
who's died. They're a gem, aren't they? They're a gem to Jesus. And the righteous he will raise up and they, they will go to heaven. And <clears throat> what a day that will be. So we want our children to know that this casket full of gems is to be put in this casket, and this is a little brain, but into maybe your little baby's you know, brain as your brain grows. It expands as God's word is hid. These gems are put into our hearts, our minds, but not just our minds. It's not just an intellectual ascent to the truth, but it's allowing the Holy Spirit to take it deep, deep, so that we have a love for it. A love. He changes our heart. All right, another tool for Bible study is a synonym finder. This is another big book. Okay, synonyms. So you find um, a word, <clears throat> and then you look up uh, words that are similar. And then you look those up in the Bible and the Spirit of Prophecy, and you find out the deeper meaning. Let's not be surface readers. Surface. Let's be deep divers, right? Deep divers, and that's what we want our children to be, deep divers into God's word. And uh, what a beautiful thing that is. Okay, so we have a synonym finder, a dictionary, concordance. Um, we have uh, index. I only brought two of these. <coughs> index to spirit of prophecy. And so we teach our children uh, about uh, the spirit of prophecy being that magnifying glass. Yes? Does it matter with the thesaurus whether it's dated or not? The thesaurus, whether it's dated? Like the dictionary. The oh, well, <clears throat> this one is a Rodale, so this is a big one. There's small ones, there's a thesaurus. It's just that the, the larger one's going to have more. Okay. Yeah. So does it matter about the... Date? Yeah. Okay. Because you check it out, always check it out with the... the when you use a concordance, you're looking at Hebrew and Greek as well, right. meaning... And so the children are looking at that and root words, and they're really going deep into meaning. So it's not about you know covering lots of material, but it's about understanding what we read. Yes. And so this is one other book that um, <clears throat> Sunlight recommended. This is the Treasury of Scripture Knowledge. And so you can I, ha I haven't used this very much, but Mrs. Cook used it a lot in studying. You want to share what what how to use this one? So these tools are, of course, resources, and how to use them is explained in the Bible study book. We don't have time uh, to go through all of that right now, but the Treasure of Scripture knowledge is a cross-reference. So in a lot of Bibles, there are cross-references. So you look up a text, and you find in the marginal reference that there's other verses that give a deeper understanding. But this has even more verses. So if I'm looking up Matthew 4.4, 4, I can go here to Matthew 4.4, 4, and it's going to give a whole list of verses that can also shed more light on that particular verse. So it's really nice, a great resource. It'll break down the different words in that verse. Um, if it's uh, a word on, like this one here, it says the word righteous in... Psalms, I think this, oh, this is Proverbs. Um, the word righteous, there's many cross-references for that particular word in that verse. So as you're studying, it's just like opening your world to all these things. You just, you read a verse and it's like, well, what does this mean? And as you look at the cross-references, oh, you have a deeper understanding of the, the word righteous or the word faith or the word bread. So that's what the cross-reference is all about, the treasury of scripture knowledge. I think there's, there's several different kinds, um, but if you just look up, e there's even some online. Uh, there's an app called, I think on my um, phone it's called MySword, it's also eSword, and you can download the Treasure of Scripture Knowledge in that. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to wrap this up quickly. 
Uh, there's another book called Spelling from the Scriptures, and so this is something also that it, the children can learn how to write out a spelling card. So it's not just learning how to spell the word, but how the Bible uses that word, or maybe look up a synonym for that. So writing out uh, that Bible verse, uh, what does the Spirit of Prophecy say about it? Uh, what is the definition of it? Um, <clears throat> Uh, so this is like how to write, uh, make a spelling card so that they, they know how to spell it, yes, but more importantly, how to use it and what the meaning is. All right, so that's <clears throat> spelling from the scriptures. And um, let's see. In the second grade to eighth grade program, uh, like I said, there'll be a character quality for the whole time that you're in, uh, like, Desire of Ages Chapter 1. That's, um, that character quality you'll be looking at is love. Uh, the second lesson is diligence. And if they've gone through, if the child has gone through the second grade to eighth grade program, remember they have been introduced to all these character qualities. Looking at them briefly for a whole week, and, uh, and hearing about them and practicing and all this. But they spend more time in the 238 program. The third one is alertness. Fourth, uh, humbleness, discernment, integrity, truthfulness, obedience, gentleness, uh, submissiveness, receptiveness, purity. So that's basically the first uh, second grade to eighth grade program, first character qualities that they'd be uh, learning. And then from there, there's um, lesson 12 and 13 that have been written. Self-denial is the character quality and trustfulness. And then uh, the rest of the books have not been uh, written, but the character qualities are there, and um, then the older children can do their own research uh, by that time. Uh, the main thing that Sunlight is doing is giving you a pattern of how to study the scriptures and bring in academics, nature, whatever it is that you study, uh, you are to always look at the scriptures first. Kim, do you want to share a little bit about uh, your apprenticeship in the last few minutes? It'd be very wonderful. So I just want to comment on the second grade to eighth grade school program and all the resources in your seminar book. These are, these are resources that we've shown you. You don't have to use them or anything like that. But what I have gained from the Sunlight program is that it teaches you, like my mom said, a pattern of how to study. So if you need to study, whatever, um, multiplication, right? How do you find out what God has to say about that? Because the, there's three aspects of true education, right? The mental, the physical, and the spiritual. So it's not just learning how to do multiplication, but how does that teach me about God, and then how can I practically use it? So it's those three aspects. Whatever you're needing to look at in your education with your children, can you learn something about God through it, and then how can you practically apply it? And that's what Sunlight does. There's more um, that we could go into in regards to how to use the books and how they're set up. Feel free to pull us aside um, at any point if you want to know more. As far as apprenticeship goes, so there's so many different options. When your child is like uh, getting older into those high school and then later years, what do you do with them? Well, the, the natural course in society is they have to go to college, they have to go to university, but there's so many more options. And uh, what God led me into was an apprenticeship, and it, de it developed into that. So I went to Sunlight with my mom at the age of 17. We moved there, and she began to work there. And as I was 17, um, Mrs. Cook, the director at the time, she said, you know, I really think that Kim has a natural aptitude towards publishing and writing and so forth, and so I would like to start training her in that. So my apprenticeship kind of developed into an apprenticeship, and I did that for about three years. And basically, it was on-the-job training, 
Um, I had the opportunity to write some of the school lessons and then uh, go on seminars with Mrs. Cook. And it just, it really was just, here's the projects and we learn together. So it was a real blessing for me. I've been in that work ever since. Um, I was young and when I came to UT Pines they said so what can you do it's like well this is what I've done and so it was very natural to go into the promotional department in the print shop and continue in that and to be in God's service it, whatever you are interested in whatever your children are interested in what's the purpose it's not just to make money not to make a living um, yeah you need to support yourself but ultimately how can you use those skills to serve God and so that was um, what I did in my apprenticeship it wasn't a, a very formal thing but it, it was just it, it developed into what I needed and there's so many options out there, different trades, like the Dysingers have the, the internship for gardening and agriculture. Great opportunities. And what I really encourage parents to do is expose your child, your young person, to as many things as possible, because you don't know what they're going to be probably naturally interested in, and what they think they're not interested in may be something that they develop a real love for. So exposing them to many things, and whether it's something that you can teach or someone else can teach, it's a great opportunity. And the more skills that they have, they'll be better prepared to serve not only in society, but also in the church, in their communities, in their families, and whatever ministry that God has them for them. So that's basically all. I don't know if you wanted to share any more, Mom? <laughs> Mom always likes me to show um, the things that I have done. I did not bring any examples. I meant to, but time ran out. Um, when I was around 14, I decided that I would start um, publishing a little paper. And I patterned it after the Young Disciple magazines that I was very familiar with. I grew up with them, and I loved their stories. And so I put together a little paper, and it started out, it was very simple. It was just one sheet of paper folded in half. You had a front cover, and then on the inside, you had a, like a main story and a poem, and then on the back cover, something else. And I would do it every month. I started um, uh, putting together, like pulling together stories and developing a database and so forth. And then it grew into something bigger. I did it for about three years. And I started, you know, developing a theme. Okay, so it wasn't just like random things putting it into the paper, but actually a theme for each issue. But it was a great learning experience. I, before I started that, I contacted different ministries and I asked, what programs do you use in your publishing? And I narrowed it down to, there were two main programs that were being used at the time. And so I decided on this one. It was Adobe InDesign. And so a friend helped me purchase version uh, 1.5. I was very early on in the whole Adobe development, but I'm so thankful that I selected that program because every ministry that I have gone to, I have used it. Um, it's a professional program and just the skills that um, it taught me. I, when I first got the program, I was like, this is so complicated. I don't know what I'm doing, but I read the manual and um, I've used those skills ever since. Uh, of course, I don't any longer produce the little paper. Um, I did it for about three years. But once again, it was an opportunity for me to share what I was learning. When I was going through the second grade to eighth grade school program, uh, at first, it was a real struggle. And mom, eventually, she shut the books. She said, we can't deal with the academics because we just need to work on character right now. It was just a battle every day. But well, finally, when I decided to choose God's way for myself, we opened the books back up. And as I would go through each section in the books, I would then write a report on it. And my reports were very simple, but then they got deeper and deeper. And I would share those. I would give those as presentations, developing that public speaking skill. And once again, that was leading me into doing seminars and being involved in church and working at ministry and publishing and so forth. So all these things are just like building and that's what you want for your children. Okay, always remember that 
it's God that uh, directs you. If you um, if you're praying and asking the, for the Holy Spirit, you're promised that He will lead you into all truth. And when I got this two through eight program, I looked at the teacher section. I said, I'm not a teacher. I don't know what it means to be a teacher. And so I just took that student section and I sat down and we went through the material together and I learned. I, 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 I fell in love with the program and so uh, because of the information there I had not learned. Even I only I went to public school first eight grades and then um, academy for high school but I hadn't learned uh, these things and the very fact that you get to learn these, uh, how to use these Bible study tools at nine years old, I said, this is it. This is so great uh, to have the Bible as the main textbook and learn. Didn't have to wait to go to Andrews University to become a theologian, but we all need to uh, be able to open the book, the Bible, and understand it and be able to share it with people and not think that we, we can't because we don't have a degree in it. But the degree that I learned was it's that measure of faith that God gave to each one of us. A measure is a degree. And so God has given us our degree. We just have to apply ourselves, put, grow our faith by putting our foot forward every day, learning a little bit more, and then sharing what we learn. And uh, God is going to do it uh, in you. Uh, if you're a parent, you're a teacher. And so uh, all parents need to learn uh, God's way. And if you're not a parent yet, uh, you want to also be learning because it's, learning is all about knowing God. All right, let's, uh, we're not, we're not going to take a break. We're going to go right into uh, choir practice so that you'll be able to sing tomorrow uh, when this church is full, hopefully. God, do we need to have a prayer to close? Or, because it's, okay. Okay, so I want you all to stand up. I want you to stand up. And if you feel like, I don't want to sing, I'm not going to sing, you're not willing, this is only willing offerings here. <laughs> But we have a song that we're going to do. Ye shall be free indeed. All right? So I want you to stand up and children and uh, bigger children, I want you to reach to the sky, stretch really far, as far as you can. And now I want you to go and touch your toes. I can't touch my toes, so you touch your toes. And then I want you to reach as far to the side. Good. And maybe move your arms a little bit and not knock anyone out. Okay, and I want you, if you can, children uh, and adult, adults, if you want to, jump as high as you can in one spot. Can you? Oh, I didn't see all the children jump. <laughs> Okay, good. And I want you to take some deep breaths and put your hands on your stomach because this is the area in which we want to expand, right? So breathe in deep, let your lungs fully expand, and then breathe out as much as you can. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to inhale, um, and I'm going to count. So we're going to inhale as much as you can, and then I'm going to count, and you're going to go and then you're going to go on, on four. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four. And each time I get to four, you're going to change. So like a snake. Then and then zo. And then we're going to go back. And then OK. You ready? So get in a nice big breath. Did you run out of air? Yeah, a few of us? Okay. So that's an exercise you can do to increase your lung capacity. All right, now I want everyone to go 
Whee! Just do that. Oh, that's so nice. Do it again. Whee! Oh, good. And when you go, ah. Oh, so good. Um, I want you to do this. Can you do that? So we're going to go. Good. All right. All right. Now I want you to sit down and I want you to take your seminar notebooks. Does everyone, who needs music? So in your seminar notebook, if you have it, is our song. And I want you to turn to Ye Shall Be Free Indeed. And if you need uh, a sheet, I have some extras. 